Hey Free Code Camp, welcome to another The Daily Programmer web series. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the problem 314 concatenated integers posted on the Daily Programmer subreddit. So let's go ahead and break it down on the whiteboard. Okay, so this concatenating integers problem is defined like so. Find a way to concatenate the numbers inside of this array in such a way that you're given the min and the max concatenation. And what we mean by that, we can just go ahead and write out all the different permutations of which we can concatenate these numbers together and then find the number which is the greatest and find the number which is the least greatest. So in this case, we're left with six permutations where we start with the one, we can start with the nine or we start with the 10, followed by the one and the nine or the 10 and the one, etc. And it turns out if you were to loop through all of these numbers and try to find the max, our max number would actually become this number. And our min would actually just be the opposite of that So if you notice, 9, 1, 10 is our max, and the opposite is actually just a reverse. So 10, 1, 9, which is 10, 1, 9 down here. So we've kind of made an interesting observation about this problem is that the max is just a reverse of the min. So since that is the case, it would make sense that if there's a way to sort this array from min to max, so I'll just go like this. If we find that array and sort it in such a way, we can just simply print out the min and the max by either traversing from left to right or right to left. So in that case, how would we actually sort this array? And does sorting the array actually work? So let's try to convince ourselves that there is a way to sort this array in such a way that gives us our min to max. So it turns out if you wanted to have this array set up in such a way from min to max, it would make sense that you need to start with the lowest number and that when that number is concatenated with another number, it gives us the lowest possible number versus concatenating with another number, if that makes sense. So again, let's just go ahead and work this out. Let's say we have an A here. This is A and this is B. Does it make more sense to have this be 1, 9 or does it make more sense to have it be 9, 1? So if A plus B is less than B plus A, we know that we found a good order and we need to keep it there. So just to say, keep A as is. Otherwise, if we have A plus B is greater than B plus A, we need to swap the elements. And if they're equal, so if equal, keep the same. And so what we mean by this, if we were to check, is 1, 9 less than 9, 1? It is, so we can just go ahead and keep these numbers as is. And then move on to the next check. And in this case, we'd actually have else here, and then we have else here. But it doesn't really matter because these won't equate the true unless the other one is false. So in this case, we know that 1, in, one should come before the 9. Let's move on and move the B over here. So we're going to check the same thing. Is A plus B, which is 110, less than B plus A, which is 101? And it is not less than. It's actually this one right here. So we need to swap these elements because, again, it makes sense that we need it to become the minimal when concatenated together. So 110 kind of should be swapped to be 10, 1. So that should make sense. Again, if you just follow this algorithm here, we can just swap them or keep them in the same as we iterate through our array. And then now that we've reached the end of the array here with the B, we can increment A and do the same check. Is 9 plus 1, or concatenate together, less than 1 and 9? It's not. It's actually this case we're going to hit, which is 91 is greater than 19. So again, we need to swap these numbers because it makes more sense to have the one concatenated with the nine versus the nine concatenated with the one. So we switch this to a one, switch this to a nine. And at this point, we have finished sorting the array. So we can get rid of these little annotations that I added. And again, if we were just to print out left to right, so min, 
So 10, 1, and 9. We got our min. So if we were to print this out right to min, or from right to left, we are going to get our maximum, which is going to be 9, 1, 10. All right, so one more time, the recap is the problem can be solved by sorting the array, and the hard part is figuring out the function to sort the array by. And it turns out our function, what we need to do is just concatenate A with B, and then check if it's less than concatenating with B with A. So let's go ahead and implement this in JavaScript. All right, so in JavaScript, let's first declare a function, and I'll call it get min max, which takes an input as a parameter, which is just going to be that array of numbers. And then here, we're going to go ahead and just call it. Um, so get min max, and then we're just going to go ahead and pass those numbers in. And just to make it simple, let's just convert these all to strings. I know the example has it as integers in the subreddit, but let's make it strings so it's easier for us. And then we can just go ahead and, let's see, get the results, and then we can just print out the results here. And just to verify that, we'll just say results.min is equal to this string, and then results.max should be equal to <clears throat> this string right here. All right, so now that we have a, a kind of a basic setup where we pass in an input, and then we expect a min and a max. So for our min max function, I'm just gonna go ahead and return an object with the properties min and the properties max, and we can just go ahead and just set those to null for now. And then we can kind of work through one by one how to get this working. So the first thing for getting the min, we first need to take the input of strings, and then we need to sort them. And let's go ahead and pass in some anon anonymous callback function. So takes A and B as a parameter. And then what we need to do here is actually really, really straightforward and really easy to do. Instead of having that long drawn out if statement, we could just return A plus B, so A concatenate with B, minus B concatenate with A. So this will give us a negative number if the A should come to the left of the B, and it should give us a positive number if the A should come to the right of the B. So again, if negative, we should keep it the same. If positive, we need to swap them. That's kind of what's going on behind the scenes. But we're using JavaScript sort and not the manual sort that I did on the whiteboard. So then that we've taken the input and we sorted them. At this point, we can just call a reduce function, which again is going to take an anonymous callback function, so a string and value. And then what we can do is just return the string and keep concatenating it with the value. So I can do something like that. Go ahead and add a yeah, semicolon. And then that should give us the min that we're looking for. And if you saw the moment I put this comment here, we go down here, line 20, it's printing out true. And that is because results, if I were to print this out, our min is actually equal to what we expected. So therefore, this function is working as expected, and it's the exact same algorithm that we worked on on the whiteboard. We have the input array, and then we sort it based on that whole logic that we worked up. And then we can concatenate them all together using a reduce function, and then that's printed out and verified against this expected output down here. For the max, we need to do is just reverse the array. So I'll say reverse here. And then we can do another reduce function to just print it out. So now down here, we can see on lines 24 results. It is printing out the expected results for max and min. These are both true. So that right there, we pretty much implemented the entire algorithm that we did on the whiteboard using JavaScript sort method, reverse method, and reduce method. And just to kind of back, take a step back, because I did like the condensed simplified version. This is very concise. Instead, what we could say is if a or pars int of a plus b is less than pars int of b plus a, we could return a negative number. And then otherwise, we return a positive number. And then if they're the same, we return 0. This is the exact same logic, basically, 
as this line 12 was. The only difference is we're kind of actually writing out how it works. And then down here we see that we're still getting true and the values still match. So obviously the refactoring is still working. But this was kind of to explain, you know, the whole algorithm that we did in the whiteboard, this is how you'd write it with the if statements. But a more concise condensed version would just be return a plus b concatenated minus b plus a concatenated, and that'll give us the same result. All right, so that wraps up the concatenated integers problem. Again, if you have a different solution, feel free to post it in the comments. And then also like this tutorial if you thought it was good, and be sure to subscribe to Free Code Camp below. All right, thanks for watching.